you want the tea, I can get with seriously. Talking about your favorite web series, right here on seriously. Just relax, we got recaps. Free your mind and have a good time, right here on seriously. Hey guys, welcome to Seriously Podcast. It's your girl Brittany. And I'm Mary. Um, and, oh, heads up, we're a hot mess. Oh, I yeah. forgot. We always forget Don't to tell you judge that. Us. I've listened to the previous podcast. <laughs> oh, so you've noticed. <laughs> of ours? <laughs> so you've noticed. <laughs> She said, oh, I know. You don't have oh, to tell me. Oh, I know. Me. I know. <laughs> I've heard no, it's a beautiful what you put mess. out there. It's a beautiful mess. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. That Let's run it back. But Let's okay. run it back. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome back to Seriously Podcast. I'm Brittany. And I'm Mary. Um, today, we are finishing up our keloid recap. And it's a very special episode because we have the creator, Huria Muhammad, with us today. Welcome. Hey, hey, hey. Boop, boop, boop. Oh. And, um... Abba Woodruff, who plays Mariel. Hello. <laughs> hey, y'all. Really, really happy to be here. Thanks for having us, ladies. Thanks, Thanks for, coming for coming in. Oh, my God. Yes. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> okay. So you've heard the episodes before, you yes. said. So yes. first question is, what was the very first web series you ever watched? I really believe that it's similar to what uh, others say, that it was Awkward Black Girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I remember, you know, people sending it to me like, have you seen this? Have you seen this? This is so good. And then I just sat there and it was so funny. It was so genuine. It was so authentic. And I think that to start, you know, I'm sure there were people before Issa Rae doing it, but for that to be the entry point that a lot of us recognize, I think it was a dope show. Yeah. Great choice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, um, oh my God! Like me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you. it's taking me a minute because I I really uh, didn't start watching any uh, web series. I had heard about uh, Issa Rae's a long time ago, mm-hmm. and I watched a couple of hers, but I just kept hearing um kind of bad reviews that really? there weren't really good web series out okay. I guess I guess that's it and there were so many I guess it was kind of hard uh, to find good reviews on yeah. on good content mm-hmm. in, in web series format so okay gotcha gotcha there's a lot out there though yeah, yeah. and a lot are really good now so yes <laughs> I know they are uh, some of them are really fantastic yeah they yeah. really are I could just sit there and binge forever mm-hmm. on yes. a lot of the shows that are out now mm-hmm so tell us how you got um, started in film and why you chose this creative path. Honestly, I always wanted to write the great American novel, but I never was disciplined enough to write a novel. Mm-hmm. I would get like maybe 100 pages in and I would lose interest in the characters. Mm-hmm. And then I would start with a new story with new characters. And one day I was sitting down and I would, God bless uh, Mara Brock Akil. She created the show Girlfriends because yes. I was watching Girlfriends and I was like, somebody's writing this. I can write this. <laughs> and then I started writing scripts and they were really good. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm about to quit my job and move to LA because that's where they make television yeah. and that's where they make films and I'm going to become a screenwriter. So I drove myself west. Took me five days. I would, you know, spend the night in hotels and get up and drive. I had my teddy bear, my plant in the front seat next to me, keeping me company, <laughs> rocking <laughs> Jay-Z's The Black Album. I didn't know anything about m- making television or making films. I didn't know anything anybody in LA I didn't know where I was gonna live Mm -hmm. I didn't know where I was gonna work but I knew that's where I needed to be and so I just took a leap of faith and it it really paid off and it launched my career as a producer and uh and the rest is kind of like history oh wow that was a long answer to that question (laughs) no No. you're good you're good how long did you stay in LA uh, about five years. Okay. I stayed right up until the market crash, mm-hmm. and no one was invested in independent projects at that time. Nobody was invested in any kind of films. There was no really any shows coming out. Everybody was like, invest in a film. Don't you know the world is coming to an end? I'm hiding my money under my mattress. What's wrong with you? And so um, I decided to move back to New York, and I've been here ever since, just building my network, um, making dope projects, and being closer to my family, which I really Really, really enjoy. Yeah. So, so, um, so what inspired you to create Keloy? Like, why did you want to create a sci-fi web series? What is it about this genre that you like or love? Well, you know, we really created uh, Keloy because we wanted 
content for the network for the Black TV and Film Collective. That's our nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. And we wanted content for the network. And we knew we wanted some sci-fi on there, but there were no scripts that were like ready to go when we were ready to start producing. So I was like, oh, screw it. I'll just sit down and I'll write something. And I had no idea, you know, that Keloid was going to come from that. I just started with an idea, you know, what would happen if my family had superpowers mm -hmm. and I fashioned it off of my mother and my little brother and their relationship that they had because like a teenage boy, when you try to tell him things, you can tell him the sky is blue and he will argue you down and say, no, no. You know, I read on the Internet that it's not actually blue. It's purple because but right. the way that our eye sees it and da, 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 da. so that's the kind of relationship that my parents had. And I just uh, that my mom and my little brother had. They were always like, you know, butting heads. And so I imagine what would happen if they had superpowers, you know? Oh, wow. Um, so what is it about this project that made you want to be involved? Um, what was the audition process process like and like, how did you get this role? Um, well, to be honest, uh, Haria made me want to be involved. I mean, I met her, um, through uh, some classes that we took and I actually worked with her on, um, not a table reading, but kind of, uh, putting some of her work up on its legs, just as a director, she was kind of uh, working with me and another wonderful actor. And so when she reached out and told me um, about this concept that she had written, it was exciting. And I just knew in any shape or form, if she called on me, I wanted to be a part. So, okay. um, and then we did what? A table read, didn't we? Yeah. The next thing we did was a table read. Mm -hmm. um, and... After that, I read with uh, some of the, what was it? It was David. all of um, the Kilo, some of the gentlemen casting, uh, being cast for Keloid, mm -hmm. as well as um, the detective. Blake. Blake. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And great job on the series. We love yes. you as a mom. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did such a great job, didn't you? Such, such a great job. Made me angry at yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> very angry. Then so I mad was, at you. Then I was probably doing my job. <laughs> um, so are you a sci-fi fan? Like, what are some of your favorite movies? Do you have any? Oh, my goodness. Um, to be honest, I was uh, a sci-fi fan more in books. Octavia Butler was mm -hmm. the, the uh, first, one of the first writers that really kind of drew me in. Uh, kind of spoke to me. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I am. Okay. I am. I'm, like, yeah. I, I'm a bit of that nerd girl. <laughs> so, on Keloid, the special effects are amazing. Oh, thank amazing. you. Amazing. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank how'd, you. How do you go about finding your team, and how was that process, like, creating those effects? You know, a visual effects supervisor was one of the first things that I knew we needed. And so I knew we couldn't really afford anybody good. So, of course, what did I do? I looked up the 10 best visual effects supervisors or the t I did a Google search for the top 10 visual effects supervisors on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And I just went down the list, contacting every last one of them, wow. explaining to them the project, you know, our organization and asking them what we work, what they work with us. Mm -hmm. And one visual effects supervisor responded and he was like, this sounds like a really interesting um, organization. It sounds like a really interesting project. I'm definitely in. And so we met, we we took several meetings together and he kind of helped us to think through how to actually shoot things mm -hmm. on set in such a way that it wouldn't be so uh, intensive on the post-production team in terms of creating the effects. Because a lot of stuff you can do in camera. A yeah. lot of the tricks you can actually achieve on set. You don't have to, you know, do any kind of special, you know, editing effects and all that kind of stuff. But he didn't actually wind up continuing the project with us. And so, but he gave us a really good foundation to get us started in terms of thinking about how to approach it. And then after we had it all shot, I did the same thing all over again. Okay. And I just reached out to, to some of the top visual effects supervisors in New York City and a really, really amazing individual, Bashir Hamid. Mm -hmm. He, we met, he loved the project. He took a look at the footage. He was like, you guys did a really, really good job. And he was like, did you guys have somebody on set that was doing visual effects on set? And I was like, no. Mm -hmm. He was like, you guys did it really great. I'm gonna help wow. you with this. And wow. so he came on board and he brought um, our compositor, Irene Park, on board because she wanted to learn a special program called Smoke. And we used that program to create the visual effects. So he basically tutored her 
and used our project to teach her how to do how to how to use smoke, which was the program that created a lot of that. Oh wow, teamwork makes the dream work. It sure, it sure does. does. <laughs> it sure does. That's so awesome. It sure does. We had a dynamite team. We yeah. had a dynamite team. You know, like I, when I look at Keloid, and I I really really love it. And when I look at it, I know that the reason that it came out so well is because of all of the individuals who were involved who really just said, hey, this is really amazing and I want to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. And without all of those folks, no way could we have achieved what we did with such, you know, small resources. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Mm-hmm. OK, so Teamwork makes the dream work. It yes. sure does. <laughs> So, Keloid and his mom have crazy powers. Oh my God! They if do. you could, uh, if you could have any of their powers, which which would it be? Uh-huh. Oh, you gotta make me choose. Um, <laughs> I like what were we calling I it? Said, Not the morphing, where you the teleportation. The teleportation. Okay. I, I have yeah. to say the teleportation. That's I know you could have jumped here today. Well, right? Yeah, <laughs> could have been here. Exactly. No more MTA fare. Uh, no. that, how much is that car how much now? Would you $170. Spend? Oh, for the the monthly. It's like, like one thirty something. Come on now. Uh, too much. Uh huh. Too much. Train, Shoot, no more down. train. No more flights. Okay. Nothing. Why you plan? <laughs> I'm going to Bahamas today. Yeah. <laughs> So definitely teleportation for me because I'm always late. I hate being late. I hate it, but I don't understand why it is that yeah. I run late a lot. Because no, I'm always me. like, I can do this one. Yeah, instead. you tell yourself, yeah. I'm going to make it. I got only need like 10 more minutes. Right, that's it. And it, then next thing you know, it's 20 minutes yeah, later. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And just even when you're ready, the point when you're really ready to get it out of the house that is like a whole 30 minutes in and of itself where you're like, okay, I'm ready to go now. And then you look at the clock. Oh, it's not so bad. And then when you actually get out of the house, it's 30 minutes later. I don't understand how that happens. Like, how did I get here? And you're like running. Like what? I don't understand how that happens. (laughs) Telekinesis, I think was really cool. Um, because I'm kind of lazy, so mm-hmm. if I don't have to get up and I can move things Talk around, about it, you know, I would definitely want that, you know. But mm-hmm. I like telepathy too, because I like yeah. to, you know, I'm gonna say something bad. You, it sounds bad, but I like to talk about what I see, mm-hmm. you know. So if I could talk, have private conversations and talk about, oh, did you see that? Right, <laughs> you know, and nobody hear what I'm saying. I think that would be really cool too. Yes, that is cool. So. Like you said, you know, we really love Marielle. So how would you describe her in one word and why? Tough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just because of the life that she's lived, she mm-hmm. knows she has to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. I would have picked tough, too. Yeah. yeah. That's that's the word that came to my yeah. mind when you yeah. said it. We said it at the same yeah, time. Yeah. Like, I said it in my head. You yeah, said it out loud. Yeah, we talking to each other. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a, that was, uh-huh. We didn't want to let it feel, but uh-huh. that's Exactly. <laughs> and finally, what are some words of advice you can give to up-and-coming actors and filmmakers? Learn how to produce. Mm. I say that without hesitation. Because... If you know how to produce, a producer is the person who really understands the pieces that need to go into the puzzle, that understands how to, the order that those pieces need to be in the puzzle, you know, um, and really just how to make the whole thing work. And so regardless of whether you're an actor, if you're a writer, if you're a director, if you know how to produce, then you will always work because you can always create your own work. And not only can you create your own work, but you can create opportunities and work for other people. Mm -hmm. That's why when people talk about diversity and inclusion in television and film, and they talk about it from the aspect of writers, and they talk about it from the aspect of directors, to me, it's just I don't want to say it's this genuine, but to me, it's not attacking the problem because you have to attack it from the role of the producers. The producers are the gatekeepers. They're the ones who are deciding who to hire, who Mm. to fire, whether we're going to shoot in Boston or whether we're going to shoot in Brooklyn, you know, which vendors we're going to bring on. So the producers really are the gatekeepers. So if you really want to impact diversity and inclusion, you got to impact it from the role of the producer. Mm -hmm. And if you want to always work then teach yourself how to fish, Yeah, you know, and you'll always work. So that's my advice. Learn how to produce. Yeah. Gems, gems, guys. That's what's up. Yeah. <laughs> um, what words of advice would you give to up and coming actors? Oh my goodness. Love what you do. Have fun in the process and just be open to learning constantly. Yes. Okay. Awesome. I love that. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Sounds like I wrote it down. And yes. Right? <laughs> like, ooh, right off the zone. See from the heart. That's yes. stuff from the heart. Yes. You know? <laughs> so Abba, thank you so much for joining us. I know you have to leave, 
But can you please tell us where our listeners can follow you and any upcoming projects that you have? Okay, so I'm kind of bad, and I, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm I'm not the social media person the way that I should be, uh, but I've recently been taking, like, some classes and stuff. It shouldn't be that difficult, but mm-hmm. I'm one of those people who just, I'm like, Facebook, what? Yeah. I'm on it, but I'm never on it. Okay. So um, Facebook, I really just started upping my Instagram game, <laughs> meaning I didn't have one before. <laughs> and so Instagram and Facebook uh, okay. would be the best ways. At... Uh, Oh my God, you're going to get me to lie now because I don't even remember. Instagram that's how new it is. is. <laughs> see, see how sad this is? Uh-huh. Mariel doesn't need Instagram. <laughs> it's abba.w. Okay. So A B A dot w see this is why right. i wanted to be a part but of i what have to doing. but i have to tell y'all she has zero posts okay up there. we're gonna get it up and going we're gonna, we're gonna get, get it, get it going. it's, it's uh-huh. gonna be but she's been tagged in a lot okay. of posts so and- if you go to photos of abba dot w you'll see a lot of photos okay oh my goodness and haria was having to tell me she was like oh you've been you know, so much, you're getting so much love. And I'm like, where? Wow. <laughs> I, know, I didn't get any flowers. What are you talking about? I'm not getting any fan mail. These are just bills I'm seeing in my mailbox. Exactly. Um, can you go on Facebook, please? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. All right. Thank, thank you so much, Alba. Thank, thank, you, thank you, ladies. Thank you, thank you very you. much. All right, so now we're going to get to episode six and seven of keloid so keep it locked so episode six starts off um keloid he got omar in the ultimate headlock yeah and these two girls are like trying to stop him yeah but then we flash back to the conversation he's having with his mom. You know, she just told him that she's going to be sleep. She's going to sleep pretty soon. And, yeah. you know, he can't wake her up. Like, she's going into hibernation mm-hmm. any minute now. Any minute now. The countdown but begins. She looks so tired. And mm-hmm. Kilo is so stressed. And confused. <laughs> and confused. Poor baby. <laughs> he got a lot on his plate right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He took it out on Omar. Yes. <laughs> You know, I think I heard last week's episode where Omar said it, that if that where Ronaldo said if he could describe Omar in one word, he would say uh, a dreamer. Yeah. But I would say playful. <laughs> playful. See, you know, you're you playing know, too much. You know how you have them <laughs> friends and they just play too, too much. much until it happens. Don't know when to stop. Yeah, they don't know when to stop. Yes. And so he got caught because he played too much. That is, <laughs> uh-huh. that is so true. Uh, so Mariel explains to him, you know, it's different for different people. Like the body rests until it cleanses itself of all the bad things you did when you were awake. And I was like, oh, cause we kept asking what is hibernation? What Why is do that? they hibernate? They so we yeah. finally got an answer. And what that defines as bad? Like if you cheated on someone, would that be bad? Or obviously killing is bad, but like, well, what would be bad? Right. Well, I, I don't know, you know. <laughs> what, I think it, you know, bad is like I think we all know bad is what bad is, you know. Yeah, I don't like know. murder, yeah, robbing someone, but like But I think that for these people, hibernation is their only weakness. Mm-hmm. You know, like every they every super hero has a weakness and for them it's hibernation and right. it's a, it's terrible i mean can you just imagine falling asleep and you can sleep for years yes. on end? Mm-hmm. And, and then you wake up you like and where you like where is my family right. everybody could be dead mm-hmm. i mean like you don't know nothing and and it happens so randomly like you could be having the best life <laughs> and it's like oh. sleep <laughs> it's like let me sleep through it <laughs> that's horrible and that's what she tells him. She says, you know, the shortest amount I've seen was two months, but last time I hibernated, I was down for four years. <laughs> four years? She, and he freaking out. He's like, like what, what did you do <laughs> to be asleep for four years, what mom? What did you do? <laughs> How old are you? Where, where, where was I when you were asleep? <laughs> right. That's what I want to know, too. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, so he's like, you know, how am I supposed to maintain on my own for that long? Like, I don't have no friends. I don't have nobody. Who can I run to? to? <laughs> Who can I run to? <laughs> Honestly, poor She's baby. like, listen, just bury me. Bury me in water or the ground. Whatever, just bury just me. put me somewhere, all right? You know, I love that part because up until that part, 
uh, Marielle has been scolding him. Yeah. You know, and she's been the one that's almost like the, that's been the parent. And in that moment, he, the roles are reversed and now he's scolding her. And when you see the look on her face, she knows that she's like, messed up you know right, what i mean right and he's standing over her pacing like you know yes. and, da, 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 and four years and what did you do and all she could do is just sit there and take it right and so yeah, and that's the, the roles reverse yeah the roles yeah, yeah. reverse in that moment that's so true um so but then as she telling him what to do to bury him she's like but remember bury me with this it's a trigger so it's going to remind me who i am and who I, you know who i was before i went to sleep so as long as I bury you with this, you'll still come and find me. It's my key. It's very valuable. There are people like us that steal these. They're called trackers. For what? And he, he was like, why would somebody want like, this? Like, for why? Why would anybody want this? <laughs> what's, what's somebody going to do with this? <laughs> he was so confused. He was like, Because her trigger why? was a leaf, right? It was a sunflower. Yeah, it was a flower, oh, so, yeah. was like, it what am I going to do with this? Why, why, why people steal that? these for what? <laughs> For what? <laughs> um, <laughs> so then, um, I think she tells him like her the her the body was giving out a smell. Yeah, and somebody and that's how, like trackers. Yeah, can track them. Yeah, like they kill them, they kill the sleepers, and then they steal their triggers. And Kilo is just like, I gotta go. Right, I, I gotta I go. Know. This is too much a process. <laughs> too much for, I, gotta I really go. don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> I just gotta go. He's like, and when were you gonna tell me this? when I get back? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> You better come away. back up in here and you sleep and see what happens. <laughs> he was like, when were you going to tell me this? When you when you sleep? Like, right. when when was I supposed to know about his all mom, of this? His mom loves not telling him stuff in, until it blows up. Yeah, she's always like, I was going to tell you. When? When? Because <laughs> that was too late. So then we go back to um, him and Omar. You know, he had, um, saw Omar. But before he went to go meet Omar, um, he was, like, walking in the street. He stayed walking in the street. And yeah. um, Blake was, like, popping in and out the playing street. Peek-a-boo. Playing. Always playing. playing in the street. Nobody has time for these games. <laughs> so Kilo, like, <laughs> senses someone's following him, so he just starts running. Like, he's like, I'm not with the shit. I'm out. <laughs> And then he, he sees Omar winning. with these two girls, and Omar's trying to hook him up with one of the girls, talking about, oh, she a freak. You in there? Like, little boy, go read a book. Go read a book. What are you talking about? Yeah. So true. he starts teasing Keloy, because Keloy's like, I don't have time for this. Like, right. I got a lot on my mind. Like, I gotta go. <laughs> First of all, he spoke about his mom, and he was. I was just like, that's a sensitive topic. Yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. do it. Don't. Yeah. Don't. And but, Keloid is still traumatized from killing Aisha. Yeah, so, he's still trauma- Like he's yeah. crying all the time. It's a lot on him. It's right a lot now. happening. So it's he's not lot. trying to get hooked up with nobody. No, he got to figure out where he's gonna bury his mom. He don't want no girls around him. Hey, Keep no, all the girls away from me. the last girl. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> so then Omar starts teasing Keloid. He's like, "Oh, you how cute? You're a virgin." But how did all Keloid said was, "I gotta go." Oh, you a virgin? How? how Maybe I just gotta go. Maybe <laughs> I, I have just time go. to be sitting around in the park. That's what I'm saying. Play too much. Play too much. Play too much. So Kilo got Buck and was like, "I got a girl. All right, <laughs> you don't know about my shorty. All right." <laughs> <laughs> so Omar's like, "Show me the receipts. Right. Where is this girl Let that me you speak see. of? <laughs> I can, you ain't said nothing about this girl before. <laughs> but then again, you just met me, so right, right." <laughs> So Keloid pulls out um, his phone. He shows he shows a pic of Aisha. Oh shit! This bitch is cute. Who call her that, man? What's her name? It's Aisha. What are you doing? I'm calling her. You wanna see if she really a girl? Give her my phone. Chill, all right? But the nerve. How you gonna show a picture of the girl you killed talking about yeah. this shit? That's some nerve. Can we talk right? about that? Can I we talk about that? Though. How you trying to prove a point? How you gonna pull out the picture of the dead girl talking about this, this your girlfriend? Girl? <laughs> but where no, she had this is though. your murder victim. Okay. <laughs> what is wrong with you? His mom should have deleted all photos oh from his phone. God. You know, sometimes oh parents gosh. think their kids smarter than they actually are. You right. Know? No. Because. Mm-hmm. You're not smart. Because mm-hmm. once this... All right, I'm already planning for season two. Because mm. once Aisha picture come up on the news, Omar is going to be like, that's that picture. I Key know. Lloyd showed me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that freaking girl. Know, that's Key Lloyd's girl. <laughs> <laughs> I know her. Talking about he killed her? 
I'm right. not surprised. He choked me up. <laughs> I'm not. He violent. He, he violent, right. y'all. He, violent. he crazy, y'all. <laughs> I'm not too good, Keloid. <laughs> <clears throat> so Keloid is like he's he's big man. He's like get my phone back, you know. Big Matt. And Omar got the nerve. Chill, chill. You got my phone. Like, <laughs> what do you mean, chill? And so they start fighting. And we see a totally different side of Keloid. I don't oh, yeah. know who this guy was. Keloid this was the going real off. This is a real Keloid. This is and the tracker. I, this, <laughs> It's the track of them. <laughs> and the first, the girls on the sidelines, they were laughing. Being birds. <laughs> Why you gotta call them birds? They were birds. A little fresh little girl. Yes. <laughs> Go home. Um, and then they were, they saw it getting serious. So then that's starting, they try to stop it or mm-hmm. whatever. Then Keloid runs off into the sunset. Because he looked like, damn, I almost killed another person. Another one. I can't yeah. have another yeah, one on me. He looked shocked. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, did I just do that? Right. Yeah. He didn't, it was like an out of body experience. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He went hawk. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, mind you he left his phone he was so shocked that what so he shocked. did almost did almost did almost killed boy and he almost had uh, witnesses this time yeah yeah <laughs> so well, he gotta leave the scene he mm-hmm. gotta leave he gotta flee so this little little boy gonna pick Answering up his phone phones. boy Boy, yes. where's your mom? Where is your mom <laughs> picking up strange items on the phone? And then the someone, hello? <laughs> this Andrew, who is this? <laughs> Little boy. I was so upset. So Aisha's mom had picked up, like, who was this? Uh-huh. All she hears is commotion. Right, mm-hmm. that's it. Followed by, hello? <laughs> like, what is going on? What's happening right now? So, um... Keloid's walking and the detective starts following him again. But Keloid's not with it. He's like, I got something for you. I got something for you. So he's doing a quick. <laughs> he pulled a Blake on Blake. Okay? <laughs> he pulled a Blake on Blake. <laughs> had him shook. And he's like, why are you following me? So then that ha- that's how the episode ends. No, not yet. No, not yet. <laughs> so what happens after that? So meanwhile, all that's happening. Keloid's mom, she's like packing slash prepping for her sleep. And, you know, she had rolls of money like she a drug dealer. Yes. I missed the scene. <laughs> and then she pulls out an old photo of her and Blake. Mm. Mm. And then she pulls out a ring. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hmm, were they married? Oh. What's happening there? Oh, yes, mm. yes, 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 yes. I do remember the photo. You know, it's interesting you say were they married. That's the first time I ever heard anybody Cause they looked like a get couple. to that conclusion. Yeah, they did look like a couple mm-hmm. in, that, yeah. in that photo. Okay. Okay. Episode seven. Go ahead. So we open up with Keloid and the Detective Blake. He brings Keloid to some basement. Some basement. Right. Some basement. <laughs> Keloid's following him because he brought him under Willingly. The, yes, under the pretense that he knows his father. So he's thinking. Um, well, his mother ain't telling him nothing. Right. He's so like, let me get you know, on this. Keloid, I'm going to slap you. Like, don't be following strangers, <laughs> strangers anywhere. Into basements in NYC. <laughs> what? <laughs> Something. Just because he said, I know your dad? No! It don't, go, it don't work like that, honey. It don't honey. work like that, Keloid. He don't know. He don't he's know. mad at his mom, so that's probably why he did. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's just and desperate. he's like, his freaking mom is about to hibernate. Yeah. So he if he could something. find his dad, I guess. he's yes. desperate. Yes. Um. <clears throat> so Keloid is like, where he at, though? Because <laughs> ain't nobody in this basement. <laughs> so... <laughs> so the, Blake is like, you know why I'm a great detective? You know, I'm patient. I know they always come back to the scene of the crime. Oh, yeah, and I never knew your father. <laughs> that was a lie. Oh, by the way. By the way. You're a I don't know who your daddy is. <laughs> wow. So he tells Keloy to just be patient, and he's like, for what? <laughs> Nobody know. So then he did something to Keloid's body, right? He couldn't move or something like that? Yeah, he warped him. Warped him. Yeah, that's warping. Mm-hmm. In that scene, <laughs> why do you think he was standing there still like that? I didn't even think. I, I, I thought, like, I thought he about to just fight be, him. I he was just scared. I he guess. had said like, "What are you doing to me?" Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was warping. Where warping. you like you can't move. You're frozen. Yeah. I wrote whopping. <laughs> that makes sense. But okay. Wop. 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 That's Wop. not. That's, that's not, not it. it. Thank, Wop. thank you for clapping. <laughs> That's a dance. <laughs> so meanwhile, okay. um, Aisha Mama, she's calling the detective on her daughter's case and is like, I got 
new information for the case. Like <laughs> I broke the case. I broke the case. But this detective is like, ma'am, your child ran away. He's like, you let still, it go. He's like, you still worry about your child? Like he's just so heartless. <laughs> like what? Like do your job. <laughs> And it's been over two months. He was like, she ran help. away. She was like, I know my daughter. She did not run she away. Didn't run. She didn't run. But this is a break in the case. Detective, my daughter is not a runaway. She's missing. Now, this is a break in the case, isn't it? I, the boy called. He called. My baby didn't run away. So she just like bumped that. Like I'm gonna go find this person yeah. myself. Yes, I'm she not letting nothing go. Well, what my mother would I mean, what mother would not turn over helping the earth to find a child? Yes, like mm. I'm not sleeping until I find out what happened to my daughter. Especially since she talked to Andre. Andre dropped the. Dime. Andre you said know? she's here. <laughs> <laughs> so then back to um Kilo basement. Back to the basement. <laughs> The bachelor party in the basement. <laughs> the bachelor. Blake is like, you know, I know you probably got a ton of questions. And then out of nowhere, his mom appears. Yeah. She, she knows. She came she, to the rescue. She knows. What's up? Mm-hmm. So then she's like, I thought I killed you. He's like, no, girl. I'm still breathing. What's up? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> And then she punches him in the face. And he's like, oh, that's the woman I remember. <laughs> Violent, crazy. <laughs> Meanwhile, bleeding from the lip. Right, right, right. And then pulls out a gun talking about she crazy, but you with, with the gun. Yeah, she's like, oh, you a punk. Like, you know, fight with your hands. What's mm-hmm. up? Then he takes handcuffs and he like handcuffs himself to Keloid. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I guess. And then he said, "Today we finish. We gonna finish what we started years ago." I'm like, "What is he talking about?" Yeah, <laughs> and she tries to stop him. He kicks her down, mm-hmm. and she weak, so she couldn't fight. Of course not. So he was <clears throat> like, "How much does he know about you? Like, right. you know this guy?" <laughs> yes. And again, I was going to tell you. <laughs> she loved to say that. <laughs> she was like, "He's a tracker." And then Blake looked offended, like, "Bitch, you too." <laughs> say i'm a track tracker you the same thing as me <laughs> she's trying it right now she is she is um, but she's reformed i guess <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> she's reformed that was, she a lot, that was the old mario true. people could change that's people true. could that's change true. people could change but at least you can say i used to be yeah but she mm-hmm. never said anything to herself no yeah, that even was when she problem. Talk told him everything about it first introduced him about track and she could have said, you know, I used to be about that life. <laughs> she could have. She, she could have said yeah, that. She could have said I used to do that, but I don't do that anymore. And you <laughs> shouldn't do that ever. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what she should have said. Could have been a teaching moment. Yeah. But no. It's very not true. Married. I'm sure she would do it differently if yeah, she could. Of course, no, if she of could. Course. She can't. <laughs> but she can't. She on the floor looking distraught. <laughs> yes. And weak. Mm-hmm. Um so she keeps so while all this happens, she tells Keloid to think about Aisha. Like she keeps telling him to think about what happened with Aisha. Mm-hmm. And we go back to the memory of him and Aisha. And he was feeling really sick and warm. I mean, and he was like holding himself like he's some kind of victim. He's he like, was. if he don't stop doing that, <laughs> he looks very, very he was vulnerable. Like, don't look at me. <laughs> Um, and I didn't even direct him to do that. He just did that naturally. <laughs> he, he did that naturally. He was like, like he, I as mean, if he had breasts, real small, or something like that. I think that David was insecure about like his chest in front, of, in front of the actress. And okay. So I think he was just trying to cover it up. Oh, poor baby. Uh huh. When my friend saw the show, she was like, "I hope they over 18. <laughs> Episode one with Aisha talking about in her underwear. I'm like, girl, girl. Mm. how old did this girl? I was like, yeah, the actors are over 18. They're like, good, because you might be in trouble. <laughs> so um, we go back to the basement mm-hmm. and Blake is like, oh, but that's not all. She she ain't even your real mother. He <laughs> said, I know about you. <laughs> he said, she ain't telling you everything. So you want me to call this woman mom? That's not your mother. Not- <laughs> That woman right there, the one you keep calling mom? She's not your mother. She tracked your mother and she killed her. That's a lie. Oh, never trust a cunt. Take it from me. <laughs> I was a tracker. He was my partner. I was your lover. I didn't 
didn't expect that. Wow. Me either. He, I did not she's like, shut that. your mouth over there. You right. really are sh- <laughs> He said she tracked and killed your real mother. Wow. I was like, what? Oh. She like, you was there. <laughs> Heartbreak. Yes, yes. All this drama between these two. I was just so weak much drama. the entire time. So she so it turns out they were lovers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Bonnie and Clyde. It's the know. way he said it, though. Mm-hmm. He was like, I was your lover. <laughs> <laughs> How about your lover? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so she's like uh, telling Keloid about him, like he wanted to kill both of you, but I was like, nah, 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 chill. Mm-hmm. So like, and when I saw you, that's the first time I fell in love. He's, I knew you never loved me. Yeah. <laughs> I said, boy, I said, it's not about you right now. Said, she didn't said, even sir. address him. <laughs> she just kept it. Why are you so salty? Uh, it's not about it's you. It's not about you right now. I knew. I knew you didn't love me. <laughs> What? That's not why we're here today, sir. That's at not why we're at here. All. Well, actually, that is. That is. Because he was scorned. Yeah, he wants revenge. Yeah, yeah, he wants his revenge. I mean, like, a lover scorned. Yeah, it's mm. not. It's recipe for disaster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then she admits that she took his real mother's trigger. So then she said, like, it's now or never. Remember what happened with Keisha. Like, it can, you barbecued her ass. Aisha. You barbecued her. Remember that. So... Kilo is like, what happens when you wake up without a trigger? Without a trigger, you don't come back as yourself. You come back. But you certainly won't remember anything or anyone. So the, um, Kilo takes this opportunity to, to like fry Blake and he killed him? Because we got a memory of what happened with, what happened with Aisha. We yeah, saw that. she just touched him and <laughs> burnt. Mm. Barbecue. Because Kilo's power of electricity emerged in that moment she was yeah. in the wrong place at the wrong time oh yeah true because that she should have been in school when she called him mm-hmm. it was like coming mm-hmm. it was like developing mm-hmm. there we go mm-hmm. that makes sense it was and then i think that he just called blake up by surprise yeah with it also oh, he, he, yeah, so he did that yeah. on purpose he did yeah. it on purpose because yeah. oh. that's why the mother said keep think, think about, about what you did do yeah, that right exactly. now mm-hmm. exactly and he like teleports out of the cuffs and Blake is just like laying on the floor dead. And sizzling. Sizzling. We use special effects for the sizzle. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Keloid's you. crying again. <laughs> He's going through a lot. Stop with the crying. <laughs> Why can't the boy cry? Why can't the boy cry? It's just. Uh, he got to bury his mom. He just killed two. The second person almost killed his one friend. He and he had to stay strong. <laughs> he do. Um. Yeah, his mom said, like, I'll, I'll take you to go see your real mom. Right. Oh, now you want to take me. Oh, you're going to take me to see my father. You remembered who my so, real mother is. Great. So she never could take <laughs> him to his father because he never knew his father? She never knew his father. So she's been lying to him his whole life. Mm. But I thought he knew his father because he, he would said, talk like. I want to see my dad. He's romanticized it. You know how kids, like, oh. you know, in his mind, his father's, like, this great general or something. Oh. You know what I mean? And he's like, oh, if my dad was here he would be nothing right. like you you know so he's romanticized wow. this idea of his dad, of his dad. you know because oh. his mother he's just like you not telling me nothing yeah she like, said he's hyper paranoid That's all she was right. like you like what i need my dad you yeah know? okay wow 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 that makes, makes so much sense. sense that okay. makes sense so they're on the train and he has no clue about what life is about right now. He don't know who he is, who Nothing. this woman next to him is. Right, like, who this this lady? <laughs> who's this woman? I don't know her. So the mom, Mario, um, she's trying <laughs> right? to... Right, we can't even we call, can't him call him mom. Mario. <laughs> so she's trying to console him. He's like, I don't know why you're even talking to me, yeah. touching me. Like, who? No. Who are you? Who she are says, you? like, the reason why your name's Kilo is because your mom told me to name you that. Before she died? Yeah, so I kept my Before promise. she slept. Before she slept. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Before I stole her trigger. Before I stole her and you, <laughs> she told me, um, make sure his name is Keloid. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. I said, all right, no problem. <laughs> Go to sleep. Good night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Peace. Bye. Um, so Keloid's like, all right, cool. So where's where she, she at? at? Where's she at? Then yeah. Mario down for the count. <laughs> she said, uh, <laughs> She said, right now, right now. As he's saying, like, right where now. she at? She's like, oh, I'm tired. Right. <laughs> now you're tired. <laughs> now you're tired, mom. Now you want to be hibernating. Okay. All right, Mario. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, one thing I'll say is his dad, this is a little secret. His dad is Sources. awake. 
exclusive. Exclusive. His dad is awake Ooh. and is looking for him. Okay. Oh, beautiful. That oh. is good. All and right. They are going to cross paths. That's lovely. The question is, will they realize? But that last scene was very heartbreaking to me. Yeah, because he's like trying to wake her up, looking around like, does anybody else see this right? woman and like, asleep? <laughs> yeah. And he cries again. You know, first of all, can I say that a passenger on the subway came up to us and was like, is she all right? Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Look. And we were like, Mr. They didn't see? Do you not see this big ass camera right. and this boom microphone? <laughs> <laughs> Please go and sit back down. You're messing up my shot right now. <laughs> concerned, but, concerned. I mean, in that scene, my heart was breaking for both of them. Yeah. Because Marielle did the best job she could by Keloid, you know, under those circumstances. She found him and she, he would have died without her. Right. She raised him oh, and true. she obviously raised him to be a good kid. You know what I mean? He's not like a hoodlum out here in the street. Yeah, no. And she changed and really became a better person as a result of him. True. And then Keloy, on the other hand, this woman has been that he thought was his mom has been lying to him his whole life. And I know. it's like, who are you? I don't even yeah. know who you are. So it's like heartbreaking for both of them. Yeah. yeah. And then to see her sleep, it's like. Although I'm mad at you, I still need you. Yeah. Yeah. You're my mom. mom. Yeah. And that's why he's like, like, what am I going to do? Mom, mom. Mm -hmm. It's so sad. It was. That was a lot. It's so sad. Like that scene almost brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. Almost. It's my favorite. It's my, it's my favorite scene of the whole, I'm like, oh my God. I'm I'm just worried for him now. Yeah. Like, what's he going to do? It's true. Like what, what kind of person is he going to turn yeah. out to be? Is he going to use it? Because he's been a little sheltered. Yeah. He really don't know very much but what's going on. That was my thing with the mom. Like, she knew all this stuff was going to happen. She should have prepared him for it. She really should have. Gave him all the steps and all everything so he wouldn't just be out in the open like this. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get to true. the QCCs because okay. there's so much. Uh-huh. Question, so what is this? Much. Questions and concerns? Questions, questions, comments, and concerns. Okay. QCC. QCC. Yeah. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yes, yes. So continue your point. Yeah, she should have. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I remember what. <laughs> You're like, what was I talking what about? Was I saying? No, she should have prepared him. Yes. And I think that she maybe, you know, it's the type of thing where you know that there's something that you got to deal with. Mm-hmm. Like she always was going to be honest with him and she just was avoiding it. <laughs> You to know, the last too, minute. Too much. It's so, so frustrating realized. that she did that. Yeah. It's like, if you knew you were about to go to sleep, you should have left New York. Mm-hmm. If you knew this dad was not around, you don't even know who this dad is. Like, you're not really preparing this kid. Mm-hmm. She wasn't really thinking properly. I think mm-hmm. in that moment, number one, she's like, her body's physically shutting down yeah. the whole time. And then number two, it's like, um, She's just in a situation where she's kind of panicked herself. It's hard mm-hmm. to tell. Yeah, she really don't know what she wants to do. What's her next move? That's what I, it seems like. I think Mario is like really, that's what makes her such a great character. She has, she's so layered. Yeah. Like I love Mario. And when people watched the show, they were like, oh, I'm team Mario all yeah. the way. Like, and some people were like, nah, I'm team Keloid. Yeah, you know? I'm team, I'm team Keloid. Keloid. Yeah. And so I think that my heart breaks for like both of them. Yeah. yeah. Because I feel like as she was telling him, she was so, you know, hell-bent on, okay, this is, you know, teleportation to the next stage. Yeah. She should have said, oh, oh yeah, hibernation <laughs> is something that happens. Also, there's a tracker there's around. There's a tracker. <laughs> Maybe may track me, I, I, I don't have, know. I used to be a tracker. Yeah. Just, she should have She should have. Yeah. She should have. And then her worst fears were realized because he found out about it in yeah. a way yeah. that was like the worst way for her to... Right. For him to find out about it. Yeah. I think she always held back from telling him because she knows she was full of shit mm-hmm. back then. Mm-hmm. And he, he would look at her differently. Like, Not yeah. to mention she took his mom's trigger. Yeah. yeah. That was like really That's bad. Crazy. You stole him from someone. Yeah. She stole him. So, that, and speaking of the mom, so she is sleeping. Mm-hmm. But Maria was like, oh, you could probably give her her trigger before she wakes up so she's been sleeping for 16 17 years potentially we don't know so if she's she, still oh we don't she's, know if she's still sleeping or not okay because oh. i was going to say if she's been sleeping for 17 years what did she do yeah <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> been yeah. down for that long that's yeah. crazy yeah she might be she might not we don't know so we don't really know mm. um yeah qcc yeah yeah um my first is 
How is Keloy going to get his mom off that train and hide her somewhere without anyone seeing him? <laughs> you know, when we come back, yes. and, when we come back in season two, I know everybody's going to want to know that. But I, I don't think that we're even going to show that. Okay. I think we're going to see like That's his life in, prog- okay. in progress. I mean, he could, of course, jump with her. You True. know. And so that would be easy. I mean, as opposed to like dragging her body yeah. you know, <laughs> like, boy, up where the you subway going? steps. Like she just had too much to drink, yeah. you know? <laughs> um, but I think when it, when we're right in season two right now, we'll probably start it where we see him dealing with just being by himself right. now, at this okay. point. He got to get a job. <laughs> he got to find some money from Will somewhere. Will he go back to school? Is oh, he right. going to start, become a thief? Like, what right. is he going to do? Is he going to become you know? a tracker? Yeah. I, I mean, his mom did leave money. Oh, but she, how she long had, is like, it going to last? <laughs> right. You know? Because we don't know how long. Rent is expensive in New York She's City. Talk about it. That's a question we had last. How did they find an apartment? <laughs> like, like that. <laughs> they just came, okay, we're going to live here. We're going to live right here. <laughs> Maybe it's exactly. all that money she had. Maybe. Yeah. All right. And the trackers, my question is, what do they gain from mm, stealing triggers, triggers yeah. and killing That's people? That's a good question. I can't tell y'all. Okay. Uh, what exactly is a trigger? So a trigger, a trigger is that thing that when you wake up, it's a symbol that allows, that like almost, it's almost like jumper cables for your car. Okay. You know, so you remember exactly mm-hmm. the circumstances. And the way something becomes your trigger, I'll tell you that, okay. which, you know, I probably shouldn't because we'll see it. But it's, it's the last, like the first time you ever hibernate in your life, it's a very, very traumatic experience. Okay. And just physically, mentally, and it's that last thing you touch before uh-huh. you before you sleep. That becomes uh-huh. your trigger. Okay. That ring. Ooh. So. Interesting. <laughs> It's the last you like the, look at that. Look at y'all faces. Y'all like, <laughs> like oh, let me process that for a second. Okay. Ugh, I don't know about that. So then you don't choose your trigger. Like, oh, this is gonna be my trigger. Yeah. Mm-mm. Oh. So how do people know to bury it? Bury Mer- it with it. Well, afterwards, like when you wake up, you know, and all this kind of stuff that that becomes your special thing. Oh, you know, you keep with you. Yeah, your whole life. Gotcha. And everyone, first of all, what are these people called? <laughs> I don't know what they're called. I haven't decided that yet. Okay. okay. So everyone that has these powers mm-hmm. at some point will go to sleep. Yeah, what if you're like a really good person? No, it's not yeah. anything bad. At some point, everybody will. Okay. At some point, everybody. Nobody's like totally like an angel. Right. Oh, so Keela's going to be out for a minute. <laughs> Keela's going to be out. Keelan. How many years? How many years does murder get years? you? But he didn't actually murder the girl. She just no. was killed. True. So the whole time, what did y'all think happened to her? I thought like um, I thought they she had sex. Up, that, yeah, you thought I she thought had, had sex. I thought they had sex, and uh-huh. then like he don't know how to use his power, so it just kind of like when he got so excited. So that's excited. What I it was. Yeah. yeah. And so, were you surprised? Oh yeah, that she was just yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it was like. <laughs> That All she was doing was taking care of him, uh-huh. right? And she just got caught. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh-huh. we did wonder like um, how she had her clothes on. So mm-hmm. yeah, I thought that she just, but then he, he just said put her like, I I um burned somebody with my penis. Yeah. So I'm like, I thought they were having sex he, in the moment. Being a dramatic teenager, <laughs> you know, teenagers are dramatic. You know, Kilo is dramatic. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he was very dramatic. <laughs> He's such he a is. good actor. He's such a no, natural. He is. He's such a natural. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this was his first role. Really? Wow. Yes. No, he played he, it perfectly. He played it really perfect well. Perfect for that role. Yeah. Like, that's that's his the role. thing. Casting is so important. You know, like you just gotta really if you cast well, then it just makes everything so much easier. Yeah. Like he was a shy little kid when he came into the, you know, audition room. Mm-hmm. And he was so polite and mannerable. And I was like, okay. We got our naturally. Keyword. He's he's exactly what we're looking for yeah. naturally, and so and he but he's ambitious also and he's like a hard worker. Yeah, we're like okay, this yeah. is the kid. He's really good. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, how why did you name him Keloid? That's something you gotta wait. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. We're gonna hear that okay. too. Okay. Okay. Y'all asking for all the seeds. We want the tea. Yeah. That's the yeah. our podcast. We give you the tea on yeah. the website. Y'all want the all the good stuff. Okay. I won't tell you that <laughs> okay. one. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. But it does relate. I'll say this. I'm probably saying too much. It does relate to an ancient language. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Mm-hmm. Google real quick. <laughs> uh-huh. <Keloid language. laughs> what does keloid mean? Right. Uh-huh. And <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm interested to learn more about Mariel's life mm-hmm. before she went to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Before she met keloid. I mean, yeah. before she encountered keloid. Yeah, because remember he had asked her like, "When did you know that you know?" these powers were like meant for you. And she was like, when I met you. Yeah. And that's You've been really, killing this entire time. Because <laughs> the thing had about no it purpose. Is, she was being like, a lot of times when you lie, you mix the lie with the truth, you know, but she was being very truthful in that the moment I met you is when I realized that this was my purpose in, in life. So when she met him, she, when she encountered him as a little baby, she really did realize and have a change and a conscience in that moment was like, no, we can't kill this kid. And then right. her whole life became taking care of him. And she equates that to her purpose in life. Mm-hmm. You know, that I have these abilities because I was meant to find you and I was meant to care for you and, and make sure and protect you, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what she believes. Okay. And how did she become a, tra- like, how do you become a tracker? Like what and makes so, you so just her father, become a tracker? Her father was a tracker. Oh. And her and she when when she met Blake, Blake was new to the U.S. He literally was just like he wasn't a tracker, and she taught Blake how to track. Oh. But they always had like such a tumultuous relationship, always like physical fights. Okay, because she just didn't know how to you know process emotions, Marielle, because she was raised by her dad. She mm-hmm. her mother hibernated when she was very young, and her father was just like a real bastard okay. you know and so and her father actually tried to kill her really yeah wow. but she but was she just, said her and her father didn't talk much no yeah. they didn't she was just like you know he was she just was his like little tag along okay but um so she just became like this like real tough kind of no emotions can't doesn't she doesn't know how to process her emotions kind of person so when she met blake blake fell in love with her but she didn't fall in love with him mm-hmm. you know <laughs> And so that's why Blake is so hurt because yeah, he's hurt. like, first of all, how you going to say I was a tracker when you taught me how right, to track, right. you know? And second of all, you know, I thought we had something, you know, something special. And, I thought I was something to until you. you tried to, until you left me for dead, you right. know? Yeah. And so Mario had a really tough life. That's why I feel really like, um, bad for her in that moment because she did turn it around with Keloid yeah. and she made her whole life about him mm-hmm. and about protecting him. So she did the best that she really could for him. Yeah, that's true. Is he going to learn more powers? Like, will mm-hmm. he be able to do like the warging or the thing that she he's did to be, him? Yeah. He's going to be able to do more stuff down the line. Oh, going to teach him that. <laughs> Oof, I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my I going to teach right. him that. Wait, more- and... Uh-huh. more um adventures for him okay. more, a lot of a lot more learning lessons he's still a kid he's only like what like 17 years old yeah. you know so he still has a long way to go mm-hmm. before he steps into his purpose oh, true uh-huh um and the detective detective blake was like oh um the person always come back to the crime scene he's talking about mario killing him uh-huh that was he killed she killed him in new york uh-huh like that. Okay. uh-huh oh uh-huh the, he said and, she, and that's why he stayed put because he always believed she was gonna come back to new york okay and it really is coincidence that keloy winds up in his um in his interrogation room yeah but it was coincidence yes okay. it is but when keloy starts when mariel starts talking for keloy he recognizes that voice. Oh, because he heard everything. He didn't hear her voice, but he re- he hears Keloid's voice. He's Keloid is the one that was saying it. Yeah. But he recognized. You know how you just can hear. The way someone yeah, talks. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. He he recognized her, and when Keloid is like she's standing outside, then Blake is like, "That's some Marielle shit right there." You know. What I mean? <laughs> Some she Mar- would be outside. Yeah, she that's a Mar- <laughs> twisting your words right now. You know, mm-hmm. that's a Mary. So he recognizes in that moment, like, what's up? Okay. Mario messed herself up. She shouldn't have told. She don't. If she don't really know that his father was in New York, why even lead yourself back to New York knowing you have yeah. that past there? Mm-hmm. That doesn't. But make she sense. thought he was dead. She oh, thought Blake true. was dead. Yeah, that is but she. But the minute know. she knew her body was breaking down, she should have been like, "We out." But Blake <laughs> is the one who told her on the train. You yeah, know what I mean, and then things started happening really fast after that. So she just thought she was just sick. She didn't. Yeah, because she said, yeah. "I forgot New York makes me sick, girl." Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Because she's a single mother of a yeah. you know teenage boy that's stressing her the hell out. <laughs> you know, with his emotional issues. So much. Uh huh. His drama. 
going to the police station, you know. Yeah. So. Okay. Hmm. All right. It's like really. Um, this has been so much fun. Yeah. It's this, like this is a good show. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you so much. It's, it's really like it, it's like a really gr- and Mariel. My mom's name was Mary. Okay. And that's why I called her Mariel because Mariel has a lot of my mom in her. Mm-hmm. Like she, my mom had like seven, eight kids. She didn't take no shit. Strong black woman. Talk One no it. kids hanging out of her house. That's None a that. line straight out of my mother's mouth. Why are these kids in my mm-hmm. house? You know what I mean? You, I got to see around corners that you can't see around for yourself. Mm-hmm. My mother is overprotective, but she really loved us and she protected us. Yeah. You know, and a lot of Mariel, a lot of my mom is in Mariel. Okay. And Keloid, the fact that he's so sheltered, that's the same way we were. We were very sheltered as mm-hmm. kids, you know? Mm. To the point where when we went to college, it was just like, what is this freedom? What is this? You know? <laughs> what do we do with this? Yeah, what do we do with this? And so I really have been enjoying the relationship, their relationship. And that's why I think what makes the show so great. It's really not about the powers. And you guys can tell me, is it about the powers or is it about the relationship? The relationship, relationship yeah. Yeah, it's about the relationships. And yeah. even with Marielle and Blake, you know, True. and you see that relationship and it's like, oh, oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. You know, and he's There's so drama. hurt. Yeah. yeah. If he don't sit down, go yeah. find himself another woman. Right. Okay. Get over it. Okay. <laughs> it's been like 17 years. Yes. Get over it. So I can't wait to share season two. I really, um, I'm looking forward to taking this to a larger audience, mm-hmm. like uh, television. Oh, yeah. We're working on, you know, that sh- we're working on putting together the package, you know, okay. to actually shop it around to networks. Awesome. That's amazing. And yes. So I'm excited about it. I'm excited yes. for you. I can't wait. I really can't. And wait. it's great to have such great fans of the show. Yes. yes. Can you share any? Share questions? your social. Share every, anything you want people to know about you. Yeah, sure. So any upcoming projects. Absolutely. All that, where they can find you and whatnot. So if you haven't seen the show and you want to see the show, go to www.keloid.tv and that'll pull up all seven episodes um that's k-e-l-o-i-d keloid.tv so you can see the whole season um and there's also behind the scenes there's interviews with the cast and the crew um a lot of good stuff is up there but if you're interested in you know learning more about production interested in maybe creating your own show or even being involved behind the scenes or in front of the camera, go to www.blacktvfilmcollective.org. And we have 1,200 members here in New York City and we work together, we share knowledge, we do a lot of relationship building events and we're always making work. And so we would love it if you joined our community. Better join. Awesome. Better, I'm gonna join. You better join. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Maria. Maria. Yeah, you, you got it. You got Maria. it. Yep. Thank you for coming. Thanks for recapping Brittany. with us. Yes. This, this was, was a awesome. lot of fun. Yeah. So much fun. I, yeah, we so really so love this questions. series. Yeah. We had a lot of questions. Yeah. I wish I had come for every time y'all did a recap because that would have been so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> We were like, what is that? What is that? Like, yeah, all of our questions were answered right now. Uh-huh. So yeah. thank you. Thank You're you. You're so welcome. Yes. So we look forward to season two. Yes. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.